and welcome along to Inside the Octagon's One Round Challenge, where we like to give you a little bit extra. And for this edition, we have chosen the hard-hitting encounter between light heavyweights Glover Teixeira and Anthony Johnson. Wow. Wow. Okay, so Dan, we are going to give you the challenge of technically analysing this fight in the five minutes of a mixed martial arts round. Do you understand the rules in which you are competing? I do understand the rules, sir. Excellent stuff. Well, in that case, what are we waiting for? Time in. Okay, let me first set this up. Anthony Johnson is the quintessential power puncher. We know that. I believe John McCarthy said it. it it's, he it's recently of... tweeted that he hits harder than anyone else inside the octagon. I believe that. I'm not saying that Glover Teixeira doesn't have knockout power because he does and we've seen it, but he's able to maintain that power, which means that he doesn't throw as hard as Anthony Johnson for me. When Anthony Johnson throws, it's 100% of his effort, whereas Glover's much better at managing that range and landing a few punches to set up the power punch. So making this fight last the three rounds is going to be an advantage to Glover Teixeira. Putting pressure on Anthony Johnson and keeping him up against the fence and wearing him out early is going to be money in the bank because... This is his range. He likes to crowd people. He likes to clamp onto people and wear them down. And if he can wrap a neck or wrap an arm or whatever, he's going to threaten it because he has got a great ground game. And once he's clamped on, there's no letting him off. I mean, he's a very strong individual. He also showed a very good takedown offence against Patrick Cummings, which then led him to this situation here where he's got him backed up against the fence picking his shots. And Cummings just had nothing to come back against. Now, Anthony Johnson, in my opinion, if he's backed up in this situation, he will shoot. He did it against, uh, against um, uh, Vitor Belfort when he was under pressure. The danger in this situation, let's just pause it, is Glover Teixeira throwing big shots and Anthony Johnson closing his eyes and throwing that one big knockout punch. Robin Orla style. Because he only, exactly, he only needs one punch. Whereas if, if Glover can fight smart and wear people down, I'm not saying he can't open up a situation like that where he lands that one shot that does the damage. Maybe not even knock him out, but opens up that, that beginning of the end for him. He's got power in his hands, there's no doubt, but he has to, he has to implement that power very well. Now, against OSP, he showed a very good game, he very, showed a very good takedown defense game, catching kicks and taking him down, and smothering him on the floor. And we know Anthony Johnson likes to throw a lot of kicks, so if this could be a deterrent for him, that's going to be a, a, a good investment for Glover to share as well. And look how he clamps down on people, climbs up them and wears them out. And really, I didn't see anybody, anybody uh, do this to, to OSP as well. I mean, John Jones fought him for five rounds, whereas Glover just dominated him on the floor. As soon as an opportunity to take his back, he just put the squeeze on. And like I said, once he's got something, he's not letting it go. He's conditioned for three rounds, and this is important because this is a three-round fight. Sure. If it was five rounds, I think it plays into his game a bit more. But with it being three rounds, I think he has to work quick and he has to work early because he needs to establish himself early on in the fight so as Anthony Johnson doesn't work his way into the fight. That single-punch knockout power of Anthony Johnson is the key factor that he's got to avoid because it is, it is fight-changing. There is no doubt about that. But there are other tools to Anthony Johnson's game, and we're going to need to see them in this fight because this is, this is not going to be an easy one for him. Glover can take a shot. He can crowd them. He took five rounds with John Jones as well and took a lot of shots. The Phil Davis fight was the best performance I've seen Anthony Johnson have in the octagon because he paced himself, he kept the pressure on, on, uh, on Davis, and you can see the panic here. He's shooting out of panic. If you shoot out of panic, he's not a good takedown. If you shoot out of confidence, that's when you're dangerous. And when you've got a beast like this that's just pinning you, pinning you with that left hand and landing big, powerful shots, you find this situation, guys running away from him, just trying to get away from that power. And poor old Gustafsson is trying to take on this monster in, in Stockholm in front of his hometown fans and was just never able to get space in this fight. And what are the, what are the, the most spectacular <laughs> knockouts we've ever seen? Again, just as we talked about before, he places the hand. He uses that left hand as a measuring stick because his power's in his right hand. And it's, see, look, that, that's an open hand, that's a post. He's posting to strike, he's posting to strike because that's his range finder. He's not necessarily interested in landing that shot at all. He just used it to keep you in the right place. That's, that's, that's all he used that left, that left hand force because he knows that that right hand is the thing that, that changes the fights. And against another guy who's a power puncher like, like Jimmy Manoa, I was not expecting him to get manhandled like this. Now, normally Jimmy's pretty solid on his feet. Normally, even if you push into him, he's able to stand his ground. But against Anthony Johnson, he was just bullied. He was bullied up against the fence. Any time that there was, a, there was a trade, Anthony Johnson always seemed to come off better because he's got that long, wide stance, and he's very good at clubbing people and knocking them off balance. And then when he lands that one shot, it's the end of the fight. And look at this. Posts, comes over the top. So again, measures with the left hand, hits with the right. 
is a very, very scary individual. And one other thing I want to mention, which I've talked about in one of his previous breakdowns as well, one of his previous uh, uh, fights, is the, the way that he stands. Most people will stand in a stance. They'll stand side on, southpaw or orthodox. Anthony Johnson stands very square. Now, anybody that's not got natural punching power cannot get away with standing like that because you can't generate power. It's so difficult. Whereas with, with him standing like that, he can generate power and he's got square hips to defend takedowns. And he's also very good at strafing from one side to the other to catch people with counters. There you go. All done. <laughs> Nice work, sir. There's so much more to say about this fight, but I mean, obviously, we've got to cut it there. But it, it, there, are, there are a lot of things going on in this fight. Anthony Johnson knows what he's got to do to get this fight won, and, and, and Glover Teixeira is the man that could potentially reverse engineer that and cause a bad night for him. Did you see that uh, Teixeira visited Mike Tyson's first gym as well? Got himself a little boxing? Brilliant. And a great inspiration for him. But you've got to yeah. think Mike Tyson's got to respect Anthony Johnson's power as well. I'm sure he does. Big UFC fan. Yeah. Right, nice work, Dan. Well, don't forget that we have another show, the big Inside the Octagon for Diaz versus McGregor. Make sure you go and check that out. We're done right now. We will be back for UFC 203, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. UFC 202 will be massive. <laughs> Enjoy it. We'll see you next time.